Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here and welcome back to another Division video. And in this video, I want to bring you guys a guide on how to complete the Dragon's Nest Incursion. Now, for this one, we're actually going to be running through hard mode, but the reason I want to do this is because I want to give you guys an explanation of the mechanics. Now, up until now, incursions haven't really been very mechanic heavy, and this one isn't necessarily that different. However, this is going in the right direction. In my opinion, this is probably the best incursion to date. It has got some light mechanics in it to the point where I feel they are at least trying to take some of the criticisms and some of the suggestions on board. So with that being said there are a few things you are going to need to bear in mind for the final boss fight so I figured that a quick all up guide would be useful. If you guys do enjoy this then a like would be super appreciated and of course don't forget to leave a comment down below. Now to begin with one of the nice things about this incursion is that this one focuses around the cleaners and while the cleaners do have the big heavy guys that basically have sniper flamethrowers the nice thing is that their shotgunners, i.e. the technicians, don't actually rush like the LMB or like the Rikers quite so much. So from my own personal experience, this does seem to be a lot better paced. You don't kind of get rushed in quite the same way, which does of course give you time to think about things, reposition yourself in the environment, and work on your encounters bit at a time. Either way, starting off at the beginning of the incursion, the first bit is pretty simple. You know, you climb the ladder, you work your way down here, the door blows open, and then you have to deal with some of the flamethrower guys. Of course, this is the first time you'll encounter a couple of the big guys the easiest way to deal with them is of course to shoot their flame tanks because of course shooting that staggers not only them but also anyone surrounding them and generally speaking because you have the whole kind of corridor behind you you've actually got plenty of space to move back stay out of the distance of their fire and you can pick them off relatively easily you then work through this first room go up the stairs up the escalators you get out to the top and this is where you'll get to the car park which is the very first part or the first main part of the incursion this one, unlike some of the other ones, is actually broken into a number of different rooms with what I would kind of call sub-bosses on this stage and then the final boss in inverted commas on the last stage. So there's actually kind of more stuff to do this time around and even on hard mode on your first try, it'll probably take you somewhere around 15, 20, 25 minutes, something like that. So in terms of length, this one actually feels a lot more appropriate. Now this one here, you land on the top of the car park and the first thing you need to do is start clearing out the enemies. Now for the most part, again, you'll be familiar with all of the cleaner enemy types However, one of the changes this time around is that the technicians, i.e. the guys with the spanners, they have a new toy and that is a remote controlled incendiary robot. Basically they will drive it towards you, it will blow up and it will set fire to the ground in a really annoying way. This is something that on hard mode is relatively manageable, on challenge and heroic is going to be one of the key things you have to stay on top of. You can shoot them, you can destroy them, so you can deal with them before they become an issue, but if you do leave them untamed and they do sneak up behind you, these are a surefire way to get your team wiped out. So. Watch out for those guys, but work your way through clearing out the enemies and once you've cleared the car park of all the general mobs, the boss phase will begin. This is where the quote unquote four horsemen of the apocalypse come out. Now for this one I would actually recommend going up the stairs and standing on this walkway here. This is really useful because you can sit behind here, you can use your skill power focus build or your tactician to throw smart cover on the wall and of course that way you can gain a damage boost and also maintain some healing. But the other reason for that is because it funnels the four bosses towards you in a pretty cool way. Now the four bosses are four big fat cleaner guys, the guys with the flamethrowers. But because of their spacing, they basically come out of the four corners of the car park. The first one will actually come out right down below you. So if you are up here, you can actually look over the top, shoot him in the head. And if you keep him stunned, you'll probably kill him basically soon after he walks out the door. After that, you can then look straight in front of you and the other one will begin walking towards you. He is, of course, your next target because the other two are at the lower end of the car park. So it will naturally take them a little bit longer to get to you, which of course means you have the freedom to focus on the one in front. Of course, while you are dealing with these bosses, you do still need to bear in mind that there will be ads around and there are again going to be those engineers with the flame robots. So at all times, it's probably worth having someone on your team to at least look out for them. So that way, if they do come your way, you can shoot them or try and like deal with them. Or if you can't shoot them, if they kind of run up on you, at least try and get out of the way. And then for everyone else, just try and deal with the bosses as and when they come round. Each time you kill a boss, more enemies will spawn, so it's in your interest to try and deal with them as quickly as possible. But similarly, don't just try and rush them at your own expense, because if you do get overwhelmed by enemies, then things will also get pretty difficult. Either way, this stage, at least on hard mode, is pretty simple. Of course, things will step up a lot more when you're doing this in challenge and in heroic mode. But once you've overcome this, once you defeat the bosses, you clear out the rest of the mobs, and you then work your way down to the final part of the incursion. It's also worth mentioning that because there are four bosses, there are also four chances of loot. And while this one is of course hard mode and your loot won't be that good, if you imagine this on challenge and heroic, that could be four potential chances at some really good loot. In fact, this could be an interesting thing to think about for just farming. If you kind of get to this point and just fight these bosses, this could be a nice repeatable way to farm some loot. Either way, that's a topic for another time. So now let's move on to the final part of the incursion. 
Once you go down the elevator shaft, you will then have another room to deal with. This is just like a general room with mobs, kind of like the one you dealt with at the beginning of the incursion. Work through these mobs, and then you'll work your way into the final room, and this is where you'll find your quote-unquote boss. There's basically a fire truck at the end of the room. It has no wheels, so it's not going to move anywhere. Kind of like the tank in Falcon Lost, only this time instead of shooting water, it shoots fire. However, this room here is interesting because this is your first introduction. If you've never played games like Destiny or World of Warcraft before, then this is your first introduction into what I would call 101 raid mechanics. It's very, very simple, very basic, but a step in the right direction. Something as simple as this section on the floor is about to be hit, you now need to move, is something that forces people to move around the map, means you can't stay in one location for the entire fight, and of course requires people to communicate, call things out, and of course work better as a team. So this is something that I feel is going to be good to teach people basic mechanics and hopefully they'll then use this to elaborate in future incursions. Either way, in this room there will be ads once again you have to deal with. Now generally speaking these ones are actually pretty tame. The main ones you will encounter are the assault rifle guys, the occasional shotgun guy and sometimes later on snipers that go up in the top of the walkways so that way they will shoot down but on this one you don't seem to encounter too many of the big fat cleaner guys with the flamethrowers but I would imagine the reason for that is because there's going to be plenty of fire here for you to deal with anyway. So throughout the fight there will be sections on the ground that are marked red and that is of course when the fire engine shoots a volley of fire at a particular area on the ground. When it's marked red it's basically your sign to say I need to get out of the way. This will then set the entire ground alight and of course once it's alight you will then burn and of course you'll take damage from it. It's not quite as damaging on the initial blast as a mortar so it won't necessarily one shot you if you get hit straight away but if you don't have exotic damage resilience then it is going to give you a hard time if you get set on fire so this is definitely one of those things where if you do have two pieces of final measure that's a really nice thing to do and if you don't have that then rolling the exotic damage resilience bonus on your armor is also a favorable thing to do and finally if you don't have that then putting down the support station with the immunizer mod on it's going to be a very very useful thing to do now the way this boss fight works is there are basically eight buttons in the entire room they work in pairs so they always work in twos there'll always be one on the left and one on the right and they'll always need to be pressed together and basically pressing these buttons will move the water tank that's at the top of the room forward a little bit and in between that you'll of course have to fight waves so you basically begin by entering the room clear out the waves, press the buttons together. If you don't press them together with one person on the left and one on the right, then you'll need to do it again because the actual tanker won't move. So this is a part where you will require communication and you require synchronization. Once you move the tank forward for a little bit, it will of course get stuck. That is the point at which you then need to deal with the waves of enemies, fight with those, dodge the fire. And then once you've dealt with enough enemies, there will basically be what I'm gonna call the apocalypse phase, which is where the fire truck effectively sets the entire room on fire. There's pretty much nowhere you can go where there isn't fire which is a bit weird because we looked around the entire room trying to sort of find some safe spots but it seems that everything during this final phase is on fire so your best bet for this if you don't have exotic damage resilience is to throw down a support station with immunizer or group up in that and that should for the most part deal with the fire of course you can heal through any additional damage but generally speaking that should see you through normally after the apocalypse phase you can then go and press the next set of buttons so they will be located slightly further in front of the last set so you then press the next set move the tanker forward, again it will then freeze, get stuck, more enemies come out, you deal with the enemies, you deal with the apocalypse phase, and then again you move it forward for the third time. Once you've then moved it forward for the third time, the tanker will then be in its final position, you'll have to deal with a few more enemies before you can then press the final buttons which will actually release the tanker and drop it on the fire engine, in turn defeating the quote unquote boss, and you're then just left to clear up the enemies. A couple of things you do want to bear in mind is that if you get too close to the fire engine during one of the previous phases, it will burn you with the fire hose, very very quickly does a lot of damage so basically the long and short of it is unless you absolutely have to get very close to maybe revive a teammate grab some ammo or something i would suggest steering clear from that and trying to sort of use the cover at the back now the nice thing about this one as I mentioned is that you don't get rushed too much so this is actually more a fight about you know working out what's on the ground working out where you can and can't stand dealing with the enemies and of course then working together to try and press the buttons and beyond that that's pretty much it it's actually Fundamentally a pretty straightforward incursion, but it is nice because as mentioned I feel like this is going in the right direction It's slightly more mechanically led as opposed to just hey We've got a ton of shotgunners and mortars and snipers and we're gonna throw them at you at the same time So in that respect I am pleased with how this incursion is going and if we get to see more of this in the future With even more mechanics then this is gonna be really really cool But for the time being that is pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this Hopefully you found it helpful if you do have any questions by all means, let me know in the comments down below. But thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.